think this next piece, um, I'm writing a, a play, wow. um, which I'm really excited about. I'm actually, um, I'm moving in, oh Christ, I'm going to say this out loud, a month and a half ah! to New York City uh, yes. to go to grad school for acting, um, which is a huge leap. I've um, been a spoken word artist for many years. I've been in a play here and there, but I'm, I'm not conventionally an actress, but they let me in their school, so I'm going to go over there. Um, but uh, this is um, my attempt at writing my own work for the stage, sort of. This is actually a spoken word piece, but it, it, it inspired a play, or I tried to write this piece. Um, so I met, uh, not I met, I found in the LGBT archives here in San Francisco, a, wo a woman named Gladys Bentley. Uh -huh. She was a Harlem Renaissance performer who performed in drag as Bobby Minton. Um, she sang body, raunchy songs about anal sex. Yeah. She publicly married a woman. She had many other lovers um, of the female persuasion. She walked down the street in a, co uh, a coattails and, and top hat and cane. She was a sight to be seen and known across the world. Her name was Buzz. She was written in books like Tim Hughes wrote about her. And then in the 1950s, something happens. She writes a letter to Ebony Magazine called I'm a Woman Again about taking hormone therapy to cure her lesbianism, marrying a man, and becoming a Christian. And you're like, what happened? You were so ahead of your time. And, and really, there's so many layers. Um, and I'm not going to go on and on about what I felt reading this, because I was just lit aflame. And um, I'm glad that one person, people either have never heard of her, or they love her. And that's just the way it is. So this is me exploring the connections that I found with her. And it's going to be a full-length piece. I'm actually excerpting it in, at a show that I'm going to be at later this month. There's flyers in the back by my books. Whee! It's Queer Rebels of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to read the piece. If this be sin. One. Let me tell you what I love about high heels. It's all in the balance. The improbability of making every step dependent on a twist of ankle pivot on the ball of my foot. It's the extra four inches, raising my average height to model proportions. It's, de it's the daring. Myself <coughs> to walk over gratings, manholes, cracked pavement. It's the curve in my calf, the burn in my thigh. It's the way I walk with my legs just that much more spread apart. It's the taunt. The bet you didn't think I could, but watch me walk laps around you and never break my stride. <laughs> Two. At the age of 16, oh, I forgot to mention, it's my words and her words put together. Figure it out. Two. <laughs> At the age of 16, I left my home in Philadelphia and went to New York. A friend told me at the madhouse on 133rd Street they needed a pianist right away, but they want a boy. So there's no better time for them to start get using a girl, I replied. At the madhouse, the boss was reluctant to give me a chance. My hands fairly flew over the keys. When I had finished my first number, the burst of applause was terrific. My $35 salary went to $125 in a week. And the club was renamed Barbara's Exclusive Club, club after my stage name, Barbara Bobby Minton. From Harlem, I went to Park Avenue. There, I appeared in tailor-made clothes, top hats and tails with a cane to match each costume. Stiff bosom, shirt, wing color, and tie matching shoes. I had two black outfits, one maroon, a tan, a gray, and a white. Three. I've got over 40 pairs of earrings. Bracelets and scarves in every color, a drawer full of skirts, a dozen cocktail dresses, and a ball gown, just in case. Oh. I've got bright orange patent leather pumps, and I have to convince myself not to wear them to work at least once a week. <laughs> I've been trying on these five letters lately. Fem. Like the way it slides through my teeth, lingers just above the bosom, leaves a hum between my hips. Four. It seems I was born different. At the age of nine and ten, I stole my brother's suits and wore them to school. I soon became more comfortable in boys' clothes and dresses. I had always been large and stocky and looked much older than the other children. Their company did not appeal to me. In class, I sat for hours watching my teacher and wondering why I was so attracted to her. At night, I dreamt of her. I didn't understand the meaning of those dreams until later. My mother began to take me from doctor to doctor. An atmosphere of whispering surrounded me. I once weighed 400 pounds, five. I can think of nothing heavier than my body. Mm. Always thick with burden, so close to stumble even now. I catch my breath remembering the quick pull of earth, scattered wood chip and concrete rushing toward my face, my childhood marked by so much dissent. I can't remember a time I felt small. 
belly bursting over too tight, hand-me-down clothes, braids unspun, tender chested, when everyone else was playing hard, I sat still, hot and blushing between my legs, hair and all the grown places, was afraid to raise my hand in kindergarten to shave, ashamed of the soft pubescent patches already budding under my arms, already knew I was everything but pretty. Yeah. Learn the words tomboy, freak, pervert, and curse myself when I thought no one could hear me sing. Damn. While I bowed before the loud applause of well-heeled, free-spending audiences, beamed at the worn words of critics while I earned large sums of money and thrilled to recognition, still, in my secret heart, I was weeping and wounded. For years, I inhabited the half-shadow no-man's land which exists between the boundaries of the two sexes. Throughout the world, there are thousands of us. Our legion is many. Our heartbreak is inconceivable. Seven. Women like us are supposed to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Those of us fat and hairy and acne-scarred, we disfigured are supposed to hang our heads, dress drab and unassuming, move quickly or slow to stay behind, never look you in the eyes if to say, don't worry. I won't take up too much space. Don't won't make you look at me any longer than you have to. I'm not asking to be loved, just left alone. Mm -hmm. The most daring thing I have ever done is wear my skirt with no stockings, hold my head eye just enough to be fully seen, and take the bus to work. Oh Eight. Today, I'm a woman again. Through the miracle which took place not only in my mind and heart, but also in my body, through the magic of modern medicine, injections of female hormones which ch helped change my life completely, I am happily married, and I hope and pray this marriage will last. Nine, what became of Bobby Minton, the boy, in his brother's slacks and jacket, sounding out the hard syllables in front of the mirror for the first time? I wonder, did you miss him? His dress shirt and stiff collar, did you miss the pull of slacks narrowing your hips the way a cummerbum would delightfully detract from the full of your bosom? Did you miss your lover's tender give, how she could take you in all of you, ham hands and barrel chest and make you feel beautiful without fail? Ten, I want the world to know that those of us that take the unusual paths are not hopeless, that we can find someone in the opposite sex who can teach us love as love really ought to exist. Maybe I can do some good, help someone out someone somewhere by letting everyone know how I became a woman again, 11. Dear Gladys, you heavy, you mess of a woman, you lay down your blues on the line. You wild woman, you devilish boy, you handsome, you daring, you burden, you colored, you black, you fat, you back entrance, you only one of your kind. All top hat and tailor made, all 400 and some pounds and downturn green. How did you ever get your fingers to fly? 12. Today, I am a woman, single and unaltered, femme and bearded, learning to fill those spaces I always left open for another kind of girl, softer, gentler, more slight in the waist. I'm starting to find myself in the mirror, deliberate and staring back. Today, I make it mine again, raise my arms up and display myself, all five, five and 150 pounds, all fat and curve and facial hair, all your bad words and defamations. Today, I hold out my chest, shake my hair in all, my, in all its glory, feel lighter on my feet than I ever have and wonder what took me so long to get here. Wow. Oh.